Now this is an A-level video and it's all to do with the chi-squared test. Notice that this is a statistical test and it's effectively used to prove whether the results of a particular experiment are significant or not. And I'm going to explain the chi-squared to you and show you past exam questions so you can understand how it's used. So let's first of all look at what the chi-squared test is. So it's a statistical test used to establish whether the difference between observed and expected results is small enough to occur purely due to chance. Notice it has to be used where we have a particular outcome that we expect and we have a list of observations and we're looking to see if those observations are different from the expected results due to random chance or because there is a significant difference. So it can be used to test what's known as the null hypothesis. A null hypothesis is one in which the results of a scientific investigation will produce no statistical significance. For example, there is no difference in the number of times a flipped coin will land on heads and the number of times it will land on tails. So we'll take the flipping a coin example because I think this gives a really nice clear image of how the chi-squared can be used. So if a coin is flipped 100 times, it would be normal to assume that it would land on heads 50 times and tails 50 times. But in practice, we know that it's unusual for these exact results to occur. And so if it lands on heads 55 times and tails 45 times, if you toss it 100 times, is this because the coin was biased or is it purely down to chance and the chi-squared test will help us determine which explanation is correct. So carrying out a chi-squared test, the chi-squared formula looks like this. We have chi-squared is the sum, which is this symbol here, of the observed value minus the expected value squared divided by the expected value. And if we use the table like this, we can see how we're going to use that formula. So going back to our flipping a coin example, we know from the information on the previous slide that the observed number of heads was 55, the expected number was 50, so if we do observed value minus expected value, we get a value of 5. If we square that, we get a value of 25, and then if we do that number divided by expected value, which remember was 50, we get 0 0.5 as our answer. Now looking along the tails row, we know from the previous slide that our observed number was 45. We expected there to be 50. So if we do observed minus expected, we get minus 5. If you square a negative number, it becomes positive. So minus 5 squared is 25. If we do 25 divided by our expected value, which was 50, again, we get 0 0.5. We sum together those two numbers to get an answer of 1. And so now we've calculated our chi-squared value, we need to compare it to a chi-squared table. And in order to do this, our first step is to calculate the degrees of freedom. Now this sounds complicated, but I promise it's quite straightforward. You just need to know what the degree of freedom means. And all it means is you need to take your number of categories, in the case of the flipped coin, that's heads or tails, and then you need to minus one from that answer. So because we have two categories, either heads or tails, we minus 1, therefore our degree of freedom is 1. And the importance of the degrees of freedom is it tells you which row to look at in the table. So because we've calculated 1 as our degree of freedom, we know we're looking along this first row. Then go back, have a look at our calculated chi-squared value, which remember was 1. And we're looking to see where that one falls along that first row. And as the arrow points out, it falls here. Now the chi-squared table, as you can see, is split into two. You've got this larger box here, followed by this box. Now notice, if your calculated value falls into this larger box on the left-hand side, we can see that our results are not statistically significant. If our value calculated had fallen into this box over here, then we would say that our results are statistically significant. So the location of your chi-squared value will give you a critical value known as p. And the critical value is the probability that chance alone could have produced the results observed. So in this example, our critical value being 1 fell between these two columns here as 1 sits between 0 0.455 and 1.32. And effectively, because we know that it's not significant, all we're saying is that that calculated chi-squared means that the probability 
that our results were due to chance was between 25% and 50%. And that's what these numbers here tell us. So one falling in this position here tells us that the probability that our results were due to chance stands between 25 and 50%. And so if we look at this slide, because our p-value was between 0 0.5 and 0 0.25, we know that our results were not significant, and so therefore the null hypothesis must be accepted. So just to write it out, we're saying that differences in the number of tails and heads produced are due to chance only i.e. the coin is not biased and therefore we're saying the null hypothesis is accepted and so you need to get used to using the right terminology. So we've already discussed our example here but let's back up a little bit and look at our general overview. So we know that the critical value p tells you if your results are significant. For results to be significant and the null hypothesis rejected the probability that observed results were due to chance must be less than 5% and therefore the p-value must be less than 0 0.05. So if we have a look, all that's saying is our chi-squared value, based on the degrees of freedom which we would have calculated, must fall somewhere in here for the results to be statistically significant. If we'd had more categories, then obviously we'd be looking at a different row because we'd have a differing degree of freedom. So our criteria for carrying out a chi-squared test, firstly, the sample size must be large, so it must be over 20. It must be used for data that falls into discrete categories, so discontinuous data such as heads or tails, eye colour, fur colour, and only raw counts must be used, not percentages or rates. So let's look at an example. Chi-squared tests in genetics. In an experiment, domestic fowl with walnut combs were crossed with each other. The expected offspring ratio of comb types was 9 walnut, 3 rows, 3 p, and 1 single. In the experiment, 160 offspring produced 103 walnut combs, 20 rose combs, 33 p combs, and 4 single combs. Devise a null hypothesis and carry out a chi-squared test to assess whether the null hypothesis should be accepted or rejected. So what is our null hypothesis? Our null hypothesis states that there is no significant difference between the observed and the expected results. So now we're going to complete the table. I've already laid out the observed results. I've laid out the expected results. So now we just need to do O minus E. So 103 minus 90 is 13. 13 squared is 169. 169 divided by 90 is 1.88 to so three significant figures. 20 minus 30 is minus 10. Minus 10 squared is 100. 100 divided by 30 is 3.33. 33 minus 30 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 divided by 30 is 0 0.3. 4 minus 10 is minus 6. Minus 6 squared is 36. 36 divided by 10 is 3.6. Now we need to sum them, so 1.88 plus 3.33 plus 0 0.3 plus 3.6 gives us a sum total of 9.11. What is our degree of freedom? So look at the number of categories. The number of categories is the number of comb types, so P, walnut, row, single. So that's four categories. Remember, we minus one to get three degrees of freedom. So we're looking along this row here. We know that our chi-squared value was 9.11, which fits in here in the statistically significant column. So that's what I've said here. 9.11 falls between 7.81 and 11.34, which means we reject the null hypothesis. Because our p-value sits between 1% and 5%, the deviation from the expected results is statistically significant, so we reject the null hypothesis.